What is up, my squirtle lights? It is I, your king, welcoming you back to more Let's Play Pokemon Platinum. In the last episode, we made it here to Orberg City and pretty much explored the city in its entirety, gathering every single item that could be found for free. But we also found out that Rourke, the gym leader here in Orberg City, is actually at the mine, which is right here. Orberg Mine, beware of busy Pokemon. Now, unfortunately, I am out of repels going in here, so we are going to run into random encounters as we go. Um, but it's worth talking about the one Pokemon that can be found in here that's brand new. So we got Geodudes. I think we... I can't remember. I think we also got Zubats that will run around here and at night, too. But the one new Pokemon to this area is Onix. Now, Onix, I am going to talk some trash here because as much as I love Onix's design, it is such a garbage Pokemon. Like, okay, it is technically better than Geodude, yes. But given that it didn't even have an evolution until Gen 2, I don't know what they were thinking with that thing because it cannot handle anything on its own. Its defense is by far its highest stat, and it's still pretty pathetic, especially given the fact that both of the types that it is the most weak to, grass and water, are special attackers lar uh, largely. Sometimes they're physical attackers, but mostly it's about the special attack. Onyx is just not that great of a Pokemon, and until you can actually get it to evolve, which you need a Metal Coat to do, I just wouldn't even bother with it. Now, Steelix is decent. I still don't love it. It's steel and ground typing does make it pretty strong. It's got much better defenses than Onyx, but overall, I'm still not in love with that Pokemon. It's just kind of a decent wall. I mean, we talked about Golem earlier, which yes, does have a higher barrier to entry than Steelix, but I would go as far to say that Golem is a lot better than Steelix, uh, at least in the context of a main story playthrough. If we're talking from a competitive standpoint, that's a bit of a different story. Yes, Steelix has some really interesting applications, but it's more of a wall stall Pokemon rather than something that's going to actually do some outright good damage and take a lot of hits, if that makes sense. So as we go through here, we got some battles that we're going to do with the workers in here. I went this way first because that is the air. This way, the direction I went uh, counterclockwise is where the leap down is. If you try to go clockwise, you're gonna actually be stopped by that wall and then have to double back. So this is the more efficient route to take through the mine. But I said in the last episode, we're gonna mostly just use Helena in here so that she can get some nice experience, especially because this is one of the few places in the game where she's really gonna be able to hold her own. So we're definitely going to want to focus on using her as much as I can, especially, man, that experience is doing wonders for her. Although, if I see a Machop, I am not gonna hesitate to switch out. Not that she can't handle that, because she absolutely can, but I want to make this quicker. So we'll let uh, we'll let Gyoja kind of handle handle this here, and he still needs to get experience too for sure. Because I'm also going to probably use uh, I'm probably going to use Helena a little bit in the actual gym as well. So take that Ember, low kick. That is actually a usually a pretty good move. Of course, Gyoja is pretty light on its feet, so low kick doesn't do all that much damage. It's entirely based on the weight of the Pokemon that it's hitting, but you use it on some of the beefier ones, and man, that can do some insane damage. Very, very good on rock and steel types, actually. All right, and immediately run into a fight. And Helena actually hit level 10 off of that fight and learned Stun Spore, which is going to be really awesome. That's the one nice thing is I can fight every rock type in here, and it's just free experience for her. Okay, stand back and watch this. Using the hidden move Rock Smash, a boulder blocking your way. Fallen boulders need to be smashed so they're out of the way. If you could get the badge from the gym in town, you'd be able to do this too. Of course, you'd have to beat the gym leader first, and that'd be me. Wow, so cold. You couldn't even, like, say, come on over. No invitation, nothing. You're just going to talk your trash and walk away. All right, well, let's uh, head back to the gym then. We got a couple more fights along the way as we go. Two more workers to battle. So let's do that. I love that he says he snuck his Pokemon to work. It's like, there's Machop right there. Why do you need to sneak? And also, there's Geodude everywhere. Again, why do you need to sneak? That doesn't make any sense, but okay. Let's do this thing. You know, as much as I love Badoo, it's little, like, top mouth opening and closing. It's bud, if you will. It's it's a little weird. It, it looks like a mouth just going nom, nom, nom at the beginning. I mean, it, it's kind of cute also, but it's weird. But there we go. And Geodude goes down. We get another nice chunk of experience. A lot big chunk of experience. Look, that was more than I was expecting. That actually might push her to level 11. Jeez, she is leveling up quick. Keeping great pace right now, which is awesome. I'm not complaining about this at all. I love it. I, I want her to succeed well. She's. I did not think she was going to have a, a great time. Also, I thought you were going to be a fight, and you are not. Okay, sorry for that cut. Uh, kept running into fights here. And we're probably going to run into a couple more on our way out of here, but I'll just kind of talk through it. Uh, I was going to use an escape rope, but actually, I'm not 
being, I'm not trustful of the escape group right now, mainly because I didn't go heal at the Pokemon Center in Ouroburg, I don't think, and that's not a good thing because I think I have to do that for the escape rope to actually work and send me back there. I didn't want to get sent all the way back to Jubilife, so that's why I neglected to use it, so oops. But uh, I will go heal now, even though I know I'm pretty much topped off already for uh, and whatnot, so I don't really have to worry about that. It's more so the fact that I just want to get all of my power points back for all my Pokemon, but then we can head on over to the gym and I, I guess I'll just keep Badoo out in front at least for a little bit because she has been doing great so far. So, let's do this thing. Let's go get our first gym badge, shall we? This is going to open up a lot of doors for us. Let's talk to this guy. Howdy, how's it going, champ to be? That's what I said to a, a really impatient boy earlier, too. Gym leader is a user rock-type Pokemon. Well, listen, rock-type Pokemon really hate water, all right? They're also weak to grass-type moves. Gee, they sure have weaknesses, but don't think it'd be easy. You don't get to be a gym leader without covering for weaknesses. Going after a rock-type Pokemon with a fire-type Pokemon won't be easy either. That's all the advice I can give you. Thanks for listening. Well, we're going to take the straight path, because this is going to allow us to do battle. If you take the long path over the bridges, then you can just go straight to the gym leader if you want. But why skip out on the experience? Why would you do that when it's going to be so much easier to just run straight there, get all of this free experience, and level up your Pokemon more on the way to the actual fight? So let's do this thing. I can't believe Absorb is just, like, ra running rampant through Pokemon this much. It's kind of ridiculous. Like, like, I get it. They're quad weak. And also, I love how as soon as I said that, this was the first one to survive a one-shot. But this thing has a base power of 20. That's it. It's so freaking weak, man. It's so weak. And yet, these Geodude and Onyx suck so hard that they still fall to it with relatively no issue. I mean, you can't just have so much physical defense that you have absolutely no special defense. That's just ridiculous. It's like, it's like they go from their best stat to their weakest stat, depending on which move you decide to use. It's, almost, it's a little too powerful. But all right, here we go. Another fight here. Um, I think this one has two? Yes, okay. More Geodudes. Again, more free XP. No, I mean, I don't know why I keep mentioning this. I, I sound like I'm complaining. I swear I'm not complaining. The fact that Helena is succeeding as well as she is is honestly blowing my mind right now. Because Badoo is really bad. This is like winning with a Sunkern, which is like notoriously the one of the worst Pokemon in all of Pokemon. <laughs> it's so bad. But yet somehow, I mean, I know it's a type advantage and all, but still, this thing should not be able to do this much damage. It's, I guess it's special attack just really is good enough. It's important to things to come. Oh, wow, Onyx, you actually tank something. You are a 20 foot rock snake. The fact that you can't survive a lot of things is that what I think you should be ashamed of. I just don't get how this thing goes down so easy based on its design. It's weird to me. I would be okay with it if this thing had really weak special defenses, if it at least had a lot of HP or something. That would make it feel a little bit more believable just due to its size. And look at that! Helene is about to learn Mega Drain, which makes Absorb completely obsolete. Like, yes, I know it's less uses, but... Mega Drain is twice as powerful with a base power of 40 and is going to be much more helpful in the upcoming fight and does the same things as Absorb. So, of course, we're going to go with that. And there we go. And look at all this. Just this free freeness. So much freeness. All right. Well, we got a level 13 Badoo, a level 14 Monferno. And, uh, well, I think it's time. Let's go. Welcome, this is the Orberg Pokemon Gym. I'm Rourke, the gym leader, but I'm what but one trainer who decided to walk proudly with rock type Pokemon. As the gym leader, I need to see your potential as a trainer. And I'll need to see the toughness of the Pokemon that battle with you. Alright, Rourke, you're on, buddy. Let's do this thing. So, he's going to have three Pokemon that is, are at his disposal. Uh, his first one is going to be Geodude. You're going to get a lot, of uh, a lot of familiar faces in this fight, although he does have one Pokemon that breaks the mold a little bit. And I say that as a joke, but I also do believe that their ability is Mold Breaker, I think. <laughs> I could be wrong about that part, but it's really funny. Anyway, uh, really good Pokemon, though, that we're going to have to be a little bit wary of. For right, for right now, I'm going to use Helena just because these are easy Pokemon for her to deal with. So why not? If he sends out Onyx next, I'll stick with her. Yes, okay, so that's exactly what he's gonna do. So two familiar Pokemon right off the bat, but the third one is where things are gonna get a little bit interesting and where I am gonna be definitely switching. You suck. I can't believe you threw out Stealth Rock right there, you suck. Well, I'll still switch just because I do want to try to knock him out with Kyoja as opposed to Helena. And there we go. 
super easy. If that was Absorb, it probably would have tanked it, but it did not. All right, on to his last Pokemon, which is Kranidos. Now, Kranidos is just a rock type. It has incredibly good offenses, but not the best defenses. This thing hits really, really hard, and it has, I believe it has a base attack of like 125. But it's kind of slow, and again, its defenses are just pathetic. So Mach Punch is going to do quite the number on this thing. Yeah, it does have Mold Breaker. I was right. That's hilarious. Okay, so let's use this. Let's see if it even survives it. It may or may not. It did, actually. We'll see. But you're going to waste your turn on Leer? Oh, honey. That is not what you wanted to do. You should have attacked first. Ooh, that's rough, buddy. That's rough. That's rough. Well, we'll just uh, mock punch to victory then. Piece of cake. And Cranidus is going to be worth quite a bit of experience too. Now, this thing can only be gotten from a, uh, a skull fossil. Is that what it's called? Skull fossil? I think it's a skull fossil. Um, which we cannot get access to yet. But again, a little bit more allusion to the fossil guy over at the Ouroburg Museum. What? That can't be. My buffed up Pokemon. You know, they really weren't all that defensive though. Cranidus does have... No, actually, it, well, it does, okay, it has really good physical defenses. It just has such bad, so I actually had its, def okay, hold on, did I have its defenses and its HP mixed up? I might have. No, I, I was right, its attack is the super high one. Its defenses suck. It's like the worst of any rock type ever. That's so funny, a base power, a base defense of 40. That is so sad for a rock type. Anyway, went and lost to a trainer, didn't have a single gym badge, but that's tough, you were strong and I was weak. That's all there is. According to Pokemon League rules, I have to give you your gym badge, or you, you our gym badge, since you've beaten me, the leader. Here's your official Pokemon League Cole badge. Awesome. Having that Cole badge means your Pokemon can now use the hidden move Rock Smash outside of battle. You should also take this, and we get TM76, which I think is Stealth Rock? I'm not mistaken? Yes. It's a move that inflicts damage on foes that switch into battle. Now, Stealth Rock is an awesome setup move in long drawn out fights. Stealth Rock, uh, every time you place it, it's going to do, I think it's one eighth of a Pokemon's HP when they're hit. Although it does do extra damage if those Pokemon are weak to rock type moves. You can place up to three Stealth Rocks in the field at a time and every Pokemon that switches in is going to take that HP hit. This is really useful for later on in the game. Now, I don't think any of my Pokemon can learn it, but it is still worth mentioning. Oh, actually, both Bucky and Gyoja can. Okay, I'm not gonna teach it to Gyoja, but that is still a super nice move to have. But like I said, it's a setup move, and it's definitely something you want to give more so to a wall than you do to a sweeper. Uh, but one of the best moves in the game, and the fact is, is that Stealth Rock can hit flying types, whereas something like Spikes cannot. Uh, also Pokemon that have Levitate. But now that we've gotten our first gym badge, let's head on into the Pokemart really quickly, and there is a couple things I need to grab. First things first. We now have access to Awakenings, Burn Heals, Ice Heals, Escape Ropes, uh, Escape Ropes, and Super Potions. I am only going to buy some Awakenings as far as status healing, so I'm just going to get three. And I'm going to use pretty much the rest of my money on Repels, or at least a fair bit of it. Uh, let's go... Okay, 16 is a little excessive. Let's go... Well, is it excessive? No, I don't think it is. Let's do it. Let's just buy them all. And then what I can actually do is offset that a little bit by selling my Stardust here, as well as my Pearl, which sells for, I think, okay, 700, okay. But I'm gonna s hold on to everything else. No, let's get rid of the Tiny Mushroom too, but we'll keep the Yellow Shard and Heart scale. Awesome, all right, that pretty much covers all of that. Now, we are going to want to explore Ouroburg Gate on our way back to Jubilife, because spoiler alert, you can't go through Route 207 right now, so don't even bother. But let me heal up really quickly. And let's go! Okay, so, not much we have to do at Orberg Gate on the way there, but let's uh, just take care of it. We're going to end this episode in Jubilife City uh, after we get there, but hold on, Barry! Whoops, Don, you got the gym badge, huh? Turn to City is the next place with a gym that gives away badges, right? So yeah, I went to Route 207, but you can't go there without a bicycle. I made my team battle and toughen them up, so it wasn't a waste. So I'm going back to Jubilife City. Next stop, the Eterna Gym Badge. Ten seconds before I dash. Nine. Bah! Who's got time to count? This kid. This kid, I swear. All right, let's immediately start by popping a rappel here, and then we can start exploring just a little bit. There's one thing we can go after while we're in here, so we're going to want to go and get that. So, Bidoof, if you don't mind breaking your way through here. Sorry, Bucky. need to t call you by your given name. And we'll just head over here and downstairs. Now, uh, I think there's actually two items to be had in here, so let's go after those. I'm going to go after this one first. 
One of them is a TM and the other one is just a regular, I think a healing item if I'm not mistaken. Definitely want these. But we just gotta blast our way through every rock along the way. I don't think there are any new Pokemon that can be gotten in this lower area. I think it's all the same. They might be slightly higher level, but that's about it. Now there's more you can do in here once you have access to Surf, but we do not, so we're not going to bother with that. So let's just keep breaking our way through. They really want you to learn how to use Rock Smash here, which I suppose is fine. I get it, it makes sense. Kind of just like a, hey, you have the thing now. And I don't think that this lady up here is a trainer. Uh, I think she's just here to tell you that if you don't have a bike, you can't explore further beyond this point. So don't bother, but uh, we'll talk to her anyway. See those bumps on the ground? It feels awesome taking those fast on a bicycle. Okay, cool. So let's grab this. We got ourselves a big pearl, which actually sells for quite a lot. So that's really nice to have. I will take that. But now we can head back, now that we've gotten everything that we can get in here so far, and make our way back to Jubilife City, where we are going to end this episode. But all right, everything's coming along really, really well. I, I, I'm, a, I'm just surprised about how good Badoo is right now. I really wasn't thinking we were going to get anything out of her until she got to, uh, she evolved into Roselia. But so far, she's been more than fine. All right, can I make it through this grass without needing? Yeah, that's what I like to see. My, can I get over to that item possibly? Yes, I can. Oh, but there's a guy here. I didn't fight you. Well, we might as well do this. That's my bad. Definitely should do that now. And I have the worst Pokemon I could possibly have out in front right now. Oops. I definitely do need to put Gyoja back in front for at least a little bit. We're going to we're gonna level him up a fair bit because I do need him to have a, uh, a certain move. Another move learned before we get to the next gym now. Because, well, yes, he probably could handle the next gym sort of okay on the current trajectory. We got some work to do with him. So we'll just kind of stick to using Ember for this fight. It's not too bad. Oh, don't be using Bide now. Who do you think you are? I am. Go down. Thank you. Frickin' Cricketot. I mean, Cricketot's kind of goofy and cute, but I don't know. I, I really don't like Cricketune. It's such a nightmare of a Pokemon design to me. Like, I get the idea. is like it's supposed to be like, he's like a little bit of a gentleman. Like, Cricketot's got the little jacket, and then Cricketune's got more of like a tux thing going on, but it's just, it's so weird looking. I've never been a fan of that Pokemon. And you know, just the fact that it's already kind of terrible, but you get what I mean. All right, let's grab this item here that I missed before. Another Pokeball, sure, why not? And ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be it for this episode of Let's Play Pokemon Platinum. Thank you all so very much for watching. Oh, hold on, Looker stopped us. Tell me, have you not obtained a Pal Pad? Is not a Pal Pad free to anyone visiting the Pokemon Center's basement? Anyway, there appears to be no one shading in this Jubilife City. I shall theref therefore take my investigation elsewhere. But, my friend, I suggest you remain vigilant for shady grown-ups. Okay, Looker, thank you for that. But, yeah, that's going to be it for this episode, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode very, very much. In the next episode, we're going to go around Jubilife City just a little bit longer. There's a couple more things I want to point out. And then we're going to head north onto Route 204. So, thank you all so much for watching. And I will see you all in the next one.